rise and shout. It is time for What's Trending, presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Jerem, BYU, Oregon, as I mentioned, back-to-back -back weeks, the Cougars are in a top 25 showdown. They took down number nine, Baylor, uh, as an underdog at home. And now I saw that. Oregon is the underdog at home, very similar to... No, BYU is the underdog. Sorry. Oregon yeah. is hosting BYU. Right but favored like BYU was, even yeah. though the rankings are such that would say, oh, no, no, Oregon should, shouldn't be BYU. Right. Oh, well, a similar situation. So uh, at 2-0, and coming off the heels of that special, special win for BYU, does what happens in Eugene make or break what could become a special season for BYU? Does it all hinge on that? I don't think so, um, because what, to me, special, Spence, is zero or one losses. That's only happened six times in BYU history. We saw it most recently in 2020, obviously. Before that, you got to go back to 96, 84, 83, 80, 79. BYU did that four times in six seasons. So outside of that, the greatest stretch in BYU football that will ever happen, I mean, that was unbelievable with all these quarterbacks and national championship, Special is zero or one. So I, I'm not sure that hinges on Oregon because guess what? If BYU can run the table after that, uh, they're good. I do see a 10-2 and two regular season as kind of the top of the mountain, it feels like at this moment, because everything is contingent on the play of the quarterback. Let me walk you through the quarterbacks and what it took in those seasons I just named to be quote-unquote special in my opinion, zero or one. 2020. You have Zach Wilson, second pick in the draft. 96, Steve Sarkeesian wins the Sammy Ba Trophy for best quarterback. 84, Robbie Bosco, Heisman number three in the voting. 83, Steve Young was Heisman second. First pick in the USFL draft. Would have been the number one in the NFL draft as well to the Bengals. You would have had a Bengals jersey with uh, uh, Steve Young's name on it. Yeah. 1980, Jim McMahon. He ends up being the fifth pick in the draft the next year. And 79, Mark Wilson is third in the Heisman. So basically, to have a special season of 0-1 losses, you probably have to have a top five pick or be top five Heisman or first team All-American or win a national award. Jaron Hall is tremendous. I'm not sure he's going to finish in one of those spots because BYU is independent. When BYU is in the Big 12, it's going to be a little easier for that. Because, and if Jaron's healthy all year, that is a possibility. Like those things I mentioned, maybe... Um, zero or one losses, maybe. If Jaron's healthy all year, BYU's got a shot. I still do believe that 10-2 and two is what is probably looking at for this regular season. And I could say uh, this is relatively special because of how tough the schedule is, because of what era BYU's in, because of who Jaron Hall and the Cougars are playing now that they didn't used to play. By the way, Jaron Hall, 7-1 and one versus Power 5 teams. I was just going to bring that up. Like, what an unbelievable stat what for What is that worth compared to what Zach Wilson did? Zach Wilson. Because isn't it weighted? Isn't it weighted more in favor of Jaron playing harder teams and beating more difficult teams? Eight and one. I mean, seven and one. That's why I say relatively yeah. special in that regard. Ten and two against this schedule. And again, Notre Dame's not as good as we would, thought. Would ten and two against the schedule equal eleven and one in 2020? I feel like it would. Oh, I think it's almost more. Maybe because right? BYU played one ranked team on the road, and that ranked team didn't end up being that good in Boise State that year. Yes. It's, it's a unique so year. It's, it's, a, it's a weighted situation, right? Yes. It feels like the real, and you said top of the mountain. I know you're talking about realistic, right? Realistic. Totally. Day. Like totally. realistic top of the mountain. Yes. 10 and 2. Now, the top, the real top of the mountain, yo, oh, undefeated, unbelievable. <laughs> 11 and 1 without question would be a special season. I think the question here 90%. is with a weighted schedule, does 10 and 2 qualify as a special season? Thus answering the question in a way of, no, BYU doesn't have to beat Oregon if we're like, hey, you can still get to 10-2 and, and have a special season. Yep. No, you don't have to beat Oregon on the road. Right. Their opportunity knocks later down the road. You've got Arkansas and Notre Dame still on the schedule there. Yep. you still got to go to Boise State and exact some revenge there. And you've got Stanford, another power five to close out the season. Say what you will about Stanford. They're a little bit better. We'll see who what they are at the end of the year. But they may be battling for bowl eligibility at that point. Maybe a situation that BYU faced in 2014 when they went to Cal and faced Jared Goff and the Bears needed to win that game to get get to a bowl game, and BYU kind of spoiled the party. Now Jamal's so, hanging out with Jericho. It, yes, he is. It feels like it's maybe that type of scenario for Stanford. But the point is, the opportunity to knocks, regardless of what happens this weekend, yes. there's enough left on the schedule yes. and enough meat on the schedule for BYU to say, nah, yeah, it stinks that BYU potentially loses at Oregon and they drop to 2-1. and one. 
But it, no, it's too dramatic to say, oh, it all hinges on if BYU beats Oregon because we lose dramatic. that game, the season's over. Yes. No, no. Everything that falls after that still is in favor of BYU making a, a major national statement. Absolutely. Like, they'll be, even if they lose at Oregon, they will still remain in the rankings. They're yep. up high enough at number 12. They fall yep. to what, like 19 or 20 if Oregon beats them? And then you go and take care of business against Utah State and Wyoming, and you're four and one, and still ranked, and like probably 15 or 16, you're taking on Notre Dame and Las Vegas. Yes, Notre Dame, no matter what happens, will be a big game. If Notre Dame's 0 and 4 or 5, 0 and 5 when BYU plays them, which I don't think they'll be, that would still be a big game Absolutely. because we have not Absolutely. cared Absolutely. how BYU Notre Dame fared when BYU beat them in those years. Notre Dame wasn't that good when BYU beat them in '94 and '04. Okay, uh, certain wins. We just don't care how that team ended up because it was at the time. And when you have the luster and the golden flex of that uh, helmet of Notre Dame, it's special, right? So Arkansas sitting there as the best opponent on the schedule now, clearly based on how they played Top the last team. Two, two weeks. Baylor still might be the best team on the schedule. Maybe it's Oregon. For me to uh, to weigh back to your point about the uh, and what I mentioned about relatively special. We need to see at the end of the year, how good was this schedule? Because we said before the season, I said, there are four AP top, preseason top 25. They're, all four aren't going to finish AP top 25. There will be two, maybe three. At this point, it looks like Baylor and Arkansas are those teams. We'll see about Notre Dame and Oregon. Oregon, oh my gosh. Oregon's it's hard the, to it's know. It's the wild card. It's the wild card. Yes, it's hard to know I what they know. are. Like we said, you get smacked by Georgia, you smack Eastern Washington. What, who are they? What are they? I don't know, but we know they're good. We know their defense is good. We'll talk to Blaine Fowler, have him break down a little more about, like, okay, tactically, X to no, strategically, like, tell us how yes. they compare to Baylor. Because yes. to me, Oregon, traditionally at least, right, is a spread team. B Blaine feels like there's going to be some power there that's similar to Baylor. But guess what? BYU matches up with power. Does me BYU match up as well with spread and speed? I think the secondary is excited about this chance, by the way. And, and back to the bigger picture. It's in Eugene. It's a big game. BYU's about to face what Baylor faced, which was you're going on the road and that crowd's going to have an impact. Can you win? Can you avenge the 1990 loss where BYU walks in like fourth, ranked fourth, and loses with the eventual Heisman winner, Ty Demmer, that, to the Ducks? It's a big game. That brings up an interesting situation, and we've talked a little bit offline about this, and we'll get into the details of this more Let's bring it on, as, as we push through the week. But... Week three is weird for BYU historically. Cougar Stats put it out today that it's uh, BYU's worst week record. Yes. In the last 50. And even years. within special seasons, let's go back to 1996. What was the one loss BYU had? Washington. It was week three in the Pacific Northwest. Suck in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest against a Pac 12 team. And BYU drops. Like, BYU was number 14 going into that game. They were riding high. They were 2-0. and They had beaten Texas A&M. They had taken care of a Big 12 opponent on a national stage. They had all mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was mojo. Yep. They go to the Pacific Northwest. They lose that game. Yep. This feels eerily similar to that situation. BYU's 2-0. They're number 12 this time. Got all types of momentum. They're going to the Pacific Northwest to take on a storied Pac-12 program. Take care of business. Man. So I, Every day! The, the thing is, they're, they're aware. They are aware. This has been brought up to them. Yes. They're, this is brought up. Week three has always know. been kind of weird. Yep. Uh, and especially when it's on Let's the road. Let's get weird. You're when it's Oregon. on the road, right? So, I don't know. Challenge has been issued. History does not technically favor BYU, but let's just throw history out the window and say go, go play the game. Vegas and history don't favor no, BYU. No, Vegas and that's is okay. all, in, all, in, all in on Oregon. Jaron Hall yesterday, I mentioned to him in the film room, which you'll see tonight on the Satake Show, great conversation with him about, about the moment with Jake Oldroyd, the Chase Roberts exchange of touchdowns. I said, and, hey, and Oregon is a, a favorite. He goes, so be it. This guy don't care. He doesn't care who's favorite in this game. He didn't care that BYU was favorite at home. No quarterback has had to play or endure and do what Jaron Hall has done as a quarterback in BYU history. Literally, McMahon and Young didn't have to do what Jaron Hall is doing. They didn't have the schedules. They didn't play as an independent. They didn't prepare for the Big 12. Jaron Hall is the most prepared quarterback in history to go win in Eugene. He is the most prepared BYU quarterback to ever do that because he's been through the fight. He's ready. This is probably his last hurrah, right? He's seven and one against eight Power Five teams, and three of those are against ranked teams at the time. Two of those are against teams that eventually went on to win or won that league, 
they were in, in Utah and Baylor in the home openers, as we mentioned the last two years. I feel confident about BYU's opportunity here. But again, it's a big game. Let's not get too used to, yep, this is going to continue. It's every way. Enjoy every little morsel of this because you don't know when 5-0, 10th-ranked BYU against Boise State coughs it up a couple times and, and gets shocked. Like, show up, play that game, go win it. Would you take Jaron Hall or Bo Nix <laughs> as your quarterback? You got an option. In my right? complete – how many BYUs yeah. are in the show? Hey. Just two right now? Yeah. 